<clears throat> All right, so this one is for you, Aries. Welcome. Actually, this is a lot of people would say this is your season. You know, April, Aries, all of that, and you being Aries and everything. So you might be feeling a lot of things head on, face on this month. That's you, Aries. This is Terra Illumination. This is your general mini report for April 2018. Okay. Cards are already well shuffled in advance. I'm just going to go to the last second so that you're a witness. And like I did with all the other reports for this particular playlist this month, I added a few astro notes. So I'm going to do the same with you guys. And it's kind of significant because a lot of it really is right in your face. And you'll see just a moment. Hold on. <clears throat> Let's just do it. Get it out of the way. Just get it done. Okay, here we go. March 31st. Okay, calendar moment. It's probably already passed as you watch this. But um, it's a very, very strong, very stressful full moon. Uh, with the Aries Libra axis very, very lit up. Very, very stressed by the Capricorn energy, Pluto, Saturn, and Mars, and especially the Saturn-Mars energy, like very, very tough military police, not just your average street bobby on the corner. These are the SWAT guys, and they're coming in saying, putting intense pressure, like shining flashlights in your faces, and saying, get out of the car, uh, stand up, show me your papers, that kind of thing. It isn't like, oh, hello. Good evening. Oh, roll down your window. Oh, looks like you've been to a party. Have you had a lot to drink? Oh, you bad person, you. Well, just take it easy. Be very careful. I'll let you go this time. No, <laughs> that's exactly what's not happening. This is totally in your face. So uh, full awareness. You're being put on, put on full alert, Aries, that there are very significant issues that need to become apparent and understood in your life and your world with regarding fundamentals of relationship, okay? So in other words, because of the Uranus and Aries thing at the last degrees right now, there's a lot of pressure, okay? A lot of pressure. Are you Aries doing everything you can to be and honor your most unique self and being? Number one. Number two, are you allowing that graciously to occur in the significant others around you? Or are you insisting that everybody complies according to the will of Aries? Secondly, are you relating to others or significant others who are treating you respectfully? Are they uh, honoring and respecting you and allowing you and encouraging you to be your own most unique, amazing self? And it's all under the observation and the intense watchful eye of the military police over here. Okay, so no squeezing out of that one. Just letting you know, that's a lot of pressure, that's a lot of light on you. Next calendar moment, April 15th, okay? Just mark this, people. It's the same energy, but it's full on. There's no uh, full moon. It's all about the new moon. So the sun, uh, Mercury, moon, and Uranus are all here piled up in Aries, right in your face. There's nowhere to hide at this time. And it's under, again, a lot of pressure from all the Capricorn energy over here, okay? Just letting you know, all right? Next, another hot spot in the month, especially for Aries, Capricorn, and Libras, and Cancers, the cardinal signs. Cancer will be down here for a couple of days. Moon in Cancer, April 21st. Mark your calendar. April 21st, hard opposition with all the military police up here, Saturn and Mars and Capricorn especially. And that's all in a hard square. Again, still ongoing heavy hard squares with all the Aries energy. So this could be a very challenging day for you too, or very much an awakening day for you. Okay, Aries. Next, as you move on into the end of the month, the energy shifts radically. And we go into the Taurus energy, uh, May, you know. Uh, and that and starts with a full moon, Taurus, Sun, Scorpio, Moon. We'll talk about that in May. But just heads up. Huge shift changes are happening for you in your second house of Taurus energy because Uranus is going to be moving into Taurus over here for the start of a brand new seven year cycle. It's global, it's going to change the whole world, it's going to change you. Okay, just so you know. All right, here we go. Let's have a look. Cards are well shuffled in advance, you already know that. 
I like to go ahead and do this in front of you as a, so you're a witness, no jumpers, no flyers, no oracles, no reversals, not enough time, space, or room. Cards are beautiful as they are. We're going to use a journey of the heart spread, and I love that one. I kind of came up with it, and I like to stick with it because it's consistent, and I like consistency uh, in a very unstable world. Please invite your angels into the reading. Cards are shuffled. We're going to cut. And uh, Terra Illumination is doing the same. I'm asking and inviting Terra Illumination angels to um, join with us. So it's a team effort. So you don't feel all you're like on your own. Okay. Because there's so much light on you. You could feel like you're, you know, people are seeing through your clothes and everything. So let's not go too far with that analogy. Okay. Anyway, here we go. <clears throat> This would be core heart energy pulsing. Uh, it want, heart needs what it needs. It wants what it wants. And it's up to you, Aries, to listen and nurture and love your heart just like you would love your most dearly loved person. Okay. It has to start with you first. I know that sounds very selfish and egotistical, but that's where it starts. That's the only way you can really be the most loving person you can be for others and others for you. Okay. It has to start from within. The heart already knows this. Do you legacy energy that you're bringing in with you um, so with the March period you might have been under a lot of stress from the heavy Pisces cluster that was all swirling around your 12th house could be a very painful delicate sensitive part of your life or the ending of the endings of a whole year cycle for you nowhere else to go with that except bury it in all its pain and sorrow and in all its glory you know and it can feel a little uncomfortable okay but now we're shifting and moving out of that. But you could still have a bit of a hangover. Okay, that's all I'm suggesting. So we're going to allow for that here. This is the energy of the ever-present now where you own all your power. It might not be comfortable because a lot of us prefer to rest on the laurels of our past uh, and our war wounds and use that as a template for the future expectations. But no, anything and everything can happen in the now. So it's important to stay as conscious and present as we can, and we um, execute the power of now through the healing power of our decisions, okay? Uh, we're very fortunate as human beings to have that faculty. So how do we do that effectively in such a way that is most loving for you, okay? We're already in the journey here, part of the slow motion, boom, 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 pumping of the heart. How do you do that effectively? How do you love yourself most effectively? through the healing power of your decisions, staying as conscious and present as you can. How do you do that most effectively? And in so doing, generate consequence, okay? So that you are as much a creative of your, of your own life as you can be, so that you're not a victim, so that you're not floating around in so-called fate. And you're just, you're actually consciously participating, okay? So again, we're all flawed. We're, we can't be like optimized 100%, 24-7, 365. So on, what happens if you're having a really bad day and you're messing up, you can't make good decisions? What does that look like? Oh, no, oh, no, oh, no. Uh, what if you're on, on a roll and things you're, you're tuning in, tuning in, and staying tuned in and turned on to your whole way of being and going with the flow? How does that look? It's the same energy. One is the inverse of the other. Over here is momentum leading straight into the next heartbeat, okay? So there is the heart shape. I hope you can see that. There's the heart pulsing at the core. Think of this as you and your life journey, all right? Over here is the weather, circumstantial weather, and you, Aries, like the rest of us, we're going to make the best of it. You've got the eight of wands. So my feeling here is that this is like go for it time. This is absolutely a green, green light to go for it. Seize the moment, grab the day, stay totally present and conscious. Like, don't waste one second dwelling on the past. Don't waste one second trying to fabricate or anticipate a future that is always fungible. Instead, focus absolutely on the now. Where is the love now? Where is the passion? Where is the excitement of being alive right now? Okay? And that's kind of what it's saying here. And it's saying to, this is to me the very encouraging, very good weather for you, so to speak. And to to grab it while you can, because it isn't always like this, okay? It's also a good time for you to express yourself 
in this way. In other words, if things are going well, share this. Radiate your, your passion, your light, your inspiration to others. Be that person to others. A lot of people don't have the courage that you have, Aries. You're, the way you're built is like act first, think later, knowing that you are right from the inside out. And if things go wrong, well, maybe you can apologize. But it's, you know, a lot of us can't do that. A lot of us don't have the guts or the courage or the, the skills or <clears throat> uh, whatever it takes to just go and do what has to be done and be who you have to be. A lot of us are very reserved. We stay well behind the front lines. You're right up there in the front line, okay? Facing into the bold uh, future, okay? What is the heart saying here? Okay, power. To me, it feels like, you know, I, I know some people think of the strength card as power, but I think a lot of this is to do with power, but this is raw power. This is literally, literally the energy of raw powers, and it's very, very important to understand what are you going to do with that. Because when you understand, when if you have so many gifts, so many talents, so many resources, it's not just for, for gloating. Like, if you got really lucky in life and you're very gifted and talented and like gorgeous and rich and you have all these gifts and you're successful and that's just your routine day to day and you don't understand how incredibly fortunate you are the heart is saying well circumstances are saying please be aware of how incredibly lucky you are and go for it and make the best of it don't apologize for being so awesome. But the heart is also saying, please understand that there's a lot at stake here. And yes, like in some ways you are the servant of the heart. In some ways the heart is the servant of you. But the whole idea is to be fully aligned so that you are one being, so that you are literally an instrument where it's almost like the ego doesn't exist anymore, where the heart is almost like crying out saying I want to be an instrument I don't want to be just like this three-dimensional awesome person that everyone else could identify as awesome I want to be beyond that I want to be it's almost like to be the vessel to be the instrument so that you can have the healing power of love move into you own it and then project it outwards literally like a magician it takes a lot of courage to do that. It takes a lot of skill. It takes a lot of power. And my feeling is that the heart is saying to you, please, dear Aries, recognize that we do have this. And it's kind of a duty and obligation when you do have this to own it and manage this responsibly, not squander this. It is a tremendous privilege and duty to be an instrument of the healing power of love. Okay. So what are you bringing in with you? Okay, <laughs> maybe you already got it. Maybe your batteries are fully charged and loaded. Maybe you have already done huge amounts of homework on your life in this lifetime, in past lives, and it's all culminating into this moment right now where you're seeing the opportunity. You're seeing the big shifts and changes that have happened. You're aware of the big shifts and changes that are coming up for you. You're not scared of all the lights being on you. You're not scared of being a lighthouse, okay? Uh, absorbing and radiating. To be a really effective instrument, you have to be very, very capable at absorbing and receiving love, the energy of heaven, and simultaneously radiating that outwards, okay? It's one and the same thing. That's the whole point of, of being an instrument. So if you're bringing that in with you, where you've already got some of that under your belt and you already know you have that, that's very, very wonderful to have because that in terms of other people, the way they would see that is uh, just basically joy and happiness. And it's very contagious. It's extremely infectious, very contagious, like the worst kind of flu. So this is very good to have uh, in your pocket, in your suitcase, in your backpack, backpack, in your resume going forward here in uh, the April season, which is kind of your time. <clears throat> So this didn't happen by accident, all right? Somehow or other, you must, whatever you're doing that's right, Aries, just keep doing that. Obviously, it's hard to maintain that 24-7, 365, but we'll figure that out later. What about the now? It might be that right now, my feeling is that in some way, there's a part of you that knows this isn't just you 
all this light, all this power, the ability to be an instrument, the desire to be an instrument, the, 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 like the heart being built to be an instrument, to be the warrior or fighter, to be a, the instrument of the healing power of love in a way that other people can't. Not everybody can do this, okay? Not everybody can have that and do that. So you're very, very lucky. I'm not going to say it's a, it's, a, it's also a tremendous responsibility, okay? And my feeling is that here in the now, my feeling, it, this is going to sound really strange, but this would not have happened. This could not have been possible without understanding what love means at the very, very core in terms of what I would call human love, where uh, this is, isn't just you on your own. This is integrating into the world where you understand that you are like like a soul being, that you've been here before many, many times in past lives, and you're going to be here again, and that you are like in tune with your own soulmate beings. And that's very, very important right now because you wouldn't be aware of this. You wouldn't have this without the reflection of a significant other. I think it's very, very important to realize here that this, okay, these are very, very challenging, stressful energies, but they can be tremendously stimulating and encouraging to, to new growth, okay, spiritual growth. And it's on the understanding that the spiritual growth that is yours and yours alone is absolutely 100% contingent on the other, the love of the other with the other, the sharing and the receiving, the giving and the receiving, because being an instrument of the healing power of love means bringing that into you, owning that, and bringing that, being loving, being loved, radiating the love. And that's like with those who love you and those that you love. It doesn't have to be the whole planet. It can just be your, your close circle of soulmate friends, uh, soulmate family kind of people, and just being there with them in that presence and, and enjoying the glow of being there with them and them with you knowing that you all have something in common. So you might be sensing that you have something like this in common with someone else, okay, who could be recognized as a soulmate with you and share this with you and you share this with them, okay? So what about the decisions? Oh gosh. <laughs> wow. So I have so I have a feeling I was kind of onto something there. With the two of cups, my feeling is to be extremely aware that this power is very, very delicate. It's very, very, very sensitive. Like if <clears throat> if you get distracted by your own um, awesomeness, for example, and think it is just you, then it's like the power loses itself. When you understand that the love that we're talking about here, the healing power of love, the actual essence, the, the ingredient itself, the core energy, the, the energy of heaven, love itself, as it moves into you and owning it out through you, that's a tremendous responsibility and understanding that it is very delicate and it can only be shared and received with those who are ready, willing, and able to receive at those frequencies. You don't have to force that down anybody's throat or push it on anyone else. It, in other words, it's like very, very much about the very, very delicate balancing act of being very powerful honoring your true self here and making conscious, deliberate decisions to relate only with those who are ready, willing, and able to receive the healing power of love, just as you have received it. And uh, you don't have to be an evangelist or a preacher or a yoga cult leader to make this stuff happen and recruit and recruit and recruit. All you have to do is love, be an instrument, love and be loving, and be loved, and do that only and only share that with those who understand and recognize that frequency in you, and you recognize that in them, okay? Very simple, very, very pure. So how do you do that effectively? Because that's quite hard to do, okay? My feeling is listen to what your body tells you. The Ace of Wands here tells me that it's just like, like if you think of the wand as a massive antenna uh, where the energy is received and the energy is transmitted, listen to it very, very carefully. Because you're trans, like as a as an instrument, you are a transceiver. You are transmitting at the same time that you are receiving. So my feeling here is to be very, very, very alert to like how powerful and sensitive this whole thing is at the same time. Extreme power, extreme sensitivity, like just a slight 
uh, aberration from the uh, the present and we're understanding where love is the essence here then the power diminishes rapidly it's just like it's almost like the laser beam energy of focus here lasers are fantastic because they can focus so intensely but anything just slightly out of alignment you don't see it all you see is like the little glow on the side but if that laser i don't know if you've ever had the misfortune of having even a little tiny toy laser flash in front of your eyes it's absolutely blinding there's so much power so that's what i'm sensing here be very aware that the power that you carry is very intense it is very powerful it's life-changing and it has to be um, expressed executed and channeled and focused very very carefully only where it is deserved where it's received where it's receivable and then even then done very very gently and very very carefully so listening very closely to what your antennae are telling you the antenna of your core, core heart and soul and um, listening to and and then and then acting accordingly in other words very aware of the power very aware of the sensitivity consequently I've seen this card in another reading here in this place. Consequently, my feeling is that once you understand what we're talking about here, Aries, it could take you into a place where you're you're not used to being. Like you're prepped up for it. It is happening right now. And you're kind of in the zone where this is just starting to happen. But to keep this going, what we've been talking about here, that's a whole other thing. Okay, like so it's okay to do like one magic trick at once, but to be able to do it consistently, uh, on, like on a professional basis, that's a whole other thing. And it could be uh, a little bit disorienting in that way. So please allow for that. Like it's, it's going to take you a while to adjust to your new power and your new light, your new radiance, and the power that comes with it, the laser-like power and focus, and at the same time, the incredible delicacy and sensitivity of the whole thing you to yourself you to others and others to you so what happens if you forget okay it leaves directly it leads directly to impoverishment of the soul and the heart in ways that are very evidential in the physical world so it's very very important to understand your own power your own light and not misuse that power okay it's not for self-aggrandizement or self uh, uh satisfaction and things like that it is it's an instrument to be shared uh, and you will naturally enjoy the abundance yourself anyway now when this is uh, let's say managed properly and you become a really good manager of your own energy what I call energy management we can talk about this if you're really stressing Aries come to terraillumination.com and get a reading do it that way because there's an awful lot of pressure here and it might be too much for some people. And if you need a little bit of TLC, um, we can do that. So when you're in the zone and you understand the delicacy of the situation and you're to totally turned in, tuned in, you get to access and be aware of, like to me, it feels like all the impoverishments that that's out there that happens when people don't own their power when they're out of alignment with themselves and to me it feels like it's almost shocking um, like when you start when you realize oh my gosh there is so much failure sorrow pain and suffering out there that you might not have been known aware of but when you get to this higher level advanced way of being uh, this becomes much more apparent you become much more aware of to me it feels like the energy of compassion and how compassion becomes very very important uh, like the energy flow isn't just about dazzling people with light and love. It's about soothing, healing energy and compassion and relieving people of their sense of disconnection, their sense of poverty, their sense of impoverishment in mind, body and soul. Uh, and the, the, the thousands and millions of people out there who are like this and who feel like this all day, every day, that's their life. And it, this needs to be known and come to the surface. And this can be healed like one at a time. I'm not saying you're going to go out and save the world like a like a comic superhero here. All I'm saying is that one step at a time for those who come forward, those who are humble enough to come forward and say, help, I need help. I need, uh, I am impoverished in mind, body, heart, and soul. And that comes to you. 
In other words, you would attract this in some way, uh, like those who need healing. Okay, let's have a look consequently. Okay, and it allows you, to me it feels like it allows you to go deep into wherever there is the pain and suffering without it touching you. Okay, so like you become immune, like you're immunized. It's like being a, a, like a war doctor, a military doctor, where, you know, there's hor horrors, nightmares, the absolutely most gruesome of nightmares happening around you all day, every day. And you have somehow or other found a way to maintain your stability, your dignity, your honor, your light and your love, and your ability to, you know, transmit the healing power of love, literally like being a healer. Uh, to those who are in the deepest pain and suffering. And all of that stuff comes to the surface, like the Nine of Wands, all the, all the, all the doo-doo, all the nightmares that are often associated with this energy and the suffering of others, because a lot of suffering is in the mind. It allow, To me, it feels like this allows you to uh, come face to face with that, understand it and, under, and, and know it all without being affected by it because there's so much light and power that you have that this is something that can be healed that's how i feel about this okay now you can reinterpret how, this however you want but it feels to me like very much this is about you coming into your power into your light and being an instrument of light uh, like a light worker for others to bring alleviation for pain and sorrow and suffering and the deep, deep suffering, the, like the, the, the deeper you go, the more suffering you discover, but you're totally immune and you can handle it. And you become like a, literally, it's almost like becoming a healer in your, in your own right. Okay. That's what I'm feeling here. You might even discover some of your own woe and me, woe is me and healing that you need yourself. And like you, <laughs> like being a doctor who takes through a medicine, you know, like, uh oh, it's time for my own immunization shots. Dang. Okay. Flu shot for this, shot for this, shot for that, shot for that. Because you realize, you know, you're a human like the rest of us and your time will come. But with this much power and light and responsibility that you have coming at you, knowing that you are under tremendous pressure to do that and be that and decide what are you going to do with that, okay, going forward. And they're not going to take the lights up or the pressure off you until May. Please understand that you're going to become exposed and encounter a lot of grief and sorrow and uh, the worst of all fears, but you are immune to it. These will be others, and these will be from inside of yourself too, but it's not going to own you, okay? Because you've got too much light and too much power, and you're immunized already, but you will become aware, okay? Uh, that's it. I'm going to leave it at that. All the best, Aries. Thank you so much for choosing Terra Illumination. Bye-bye.